Hi, welcome to Games Made Easy. My name is Lavinia and this is Peter. Today I'm very happy to teach you and give you some tips on how to play the first expansion of Arc Nova Marine World, designed by Matthias Wigge and published by Furyland Spiel and Capstone Games. If you haven't played Arc Nova, check out my other video where I explain how to play it. And if you have played it and love it, you're going to love this expansion. Marine Worlds does what I think all expansions should do. It adds new dimensions and new paths to victory without changing the essence of the game or making it longer or too complicated. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the like button and the bell to get notified when I post new videos. It helps a lot. In Ark Nova, Marine Worlds, you still compete against other players to build the most appealing zoo, but this time you have new marine animals and the new aquarium enclosures. There's also new action cards, new universities, new cool counters and tokens, new bonus tiles and a ton of new cards. Despite all these new components, the gameplay and winning conditions are the same. Before you set up, there's a few components you need to add or replace from the base game. Start with all the cards. You have new base conservation, final scoring, and zoo cards. On page two of the rules, you have a list of cards you should replace. If you ever want to revert to the base game, you can easily find the cards of this expansion as they are marked with the seahorse icon. Add the new tiles and tokens to the supply. You have a small and a large aquarium. New unique buildings, new universities, new bonus tiles, and additional kiosk and pavilions. Then for all four players, Add these three alternate wooden markers, which replace those that were in the base game. And seven player tokens, which are cute animals to mark the conservation projects you support instead of using your regular player markers. Finally, replace the association board and you're ready to play. Let's see what is different in the setup of this expansion. The biggest difference is the drafting of the action cards. There's an entire set of new action cards, four alternate cards for each of the five action cards, the special bonus or action is mentioned here and also explained in the description. They are also pretty cool and you can check what they do in detail on pages 2 to 4 of the glossary. Some give an additional effect, some give a different value to the bonus, others don't necessarily look great at the start but have powerful effects once you upgrade them. So check the both sides. To play them, shuffle all 20 just after you've picked your zoo, but before you do anything else, randomly distribute three alternate action cards to each player. Each player picks one and passes the other two to the player on the left, who then picks one and passes the last card to the player on the left. Discard one of those three. If you have two cards of the same type of action in your last three cards, you must discard one of them as your final two cards must be of two different types. If by any chance your three cards are of the same type, draw a random one from those not in the draft. Once you have your two new action cards, exchange them from those in your base hand. It's a great way to increase the asymmetry of this game. Apart from that, playing this expansion is very much like the base game. There are 32 new animals in this expansion and 26 of them are sea animals. So I'll start by explaining how you play these new sea animals and their habitats. All 26 new sea animals are represented by this purple octopus icon, and all of them can be placed in an aquarium. Most sea animals cannot be accommodated in a standard enclosure. That's why their enclosure size is in red. A couple of sea turtles can be accommodated in the reptile house or the aquarium. As for the African penguin, it's the only sea animal that can also be placed in a standard enclosure. There are two sizes of aquariums you can build. The small one covers two spaces and the large one covers five spaces. Like the petting zoo, you can build these structures from the start of the game. And also, like all the other special enclosures, you can only build one of each type of aquarium per game. As shown here and here, these new special enclosures must be built adjacent to water and these will count as water icons. Note that if you build your second aquarium, you don't have to place it near your first one. Like in the base game, when you build your first aquarium, if you already have animals in your zoo that can be accommodated there, you can transfer them this once. This applies to the loggerhead sea turtle and the green sea turtle. This would also work the other way round. You could transfer these two turtles from your aquarium when you build the reptile house. You cannot transfer animals as you build your second aquarium, so plan this properly. 
Now, let me show you the different accommodation rules for the sea animals. If there's a red hex and only an aquarium icon, you can only place the animal in an aquarium. The white number in the aquarium is the number of player cubes you place in the aquarium to place the animal. The red number is only there to indicate the size, like if you need to know it's a small or large animal. The card only shows the large aquarium, but you can use either aquarium. And strangely enough, you can also split your cubes between both aquariums. However, when you place a loggerhead sea turtle or a green sea turtle, you cannot split between the reptile house or the aquariums. The same applies when you release them. You take from only one type of enclosure. The rock icon is like in the base game. You need to place this animal in an aquarium that is adjacent to a rock space. Also like in the base game is the way you place the African penguin adjacent to a water and a rock. Now I'll explain what a reef dweller is. There are 15 sea animals which are also reef dwellers shown by this red coral icon on the right side of their card. Whenever you add a reef dweller to your zoo, you trigger the ability of this animal. Most effects are explained on the card, otherwise they are like in the base game. But the really cool thing about reef dwellers is that you activate all of those already in your zoo every time you place a new one. You also decide in which order you want to play them. This can be really powerful if you're lucky enough to have three or four of them. I'll now explain the wave icon, which helps deal with the dilution of the deck naturally caused by adding more cards. All sea animals have a wave icon, as shown here. Whenever it is revealed in the display, you discard the first card in the row, then replenish. You can do this twice if you draw two in a row. Ignore the wave during setup, or when you're placing the animal into your zoo. Now I'll show you the seven new conservation projects and the 22 new sponsors. Six of the new conservation projects are about animal management plans and they bring a variety of benefits if you have two icons of that specific animal. As for the sponsors, only six of the 22 new sponsors are related to sea animals. The others are like in the base game. I'll now explain the new type of university available in this expansion. If you take this fourth type from the association board, place it near your player board and take one of six special universities from the reserve. They all feature one research icon and one of six animal icons. Place this one on your player board. The later you pick this university, the fewer animals you will choose from. However, they always give you a couple more advantages in addition to having one additional research icon and one additional icon of that animal. You can activate any sponsor or ability activated by this animal icon. When you take this university, you also reveal cards from the top of the deck and keep the first revealed animal card that matches the animal icon of your chosen university. You can only have one new university per game. Finally, I'll explain the new final scoring cards and bonus tiles. The new final scoring cards work exactly like in the base game. What's new with the bonus tiles is that this one has an ongoing effect and you can play those with a grey background at any time, either when you pick them up or any time later during the game. Flip the tile after you've used its bonus. With that one, snap immediately and also increase your hand limit by one for the rest of the game. Finally, there's a difference at the end of the reputation track. If you are on space 15 and you score new reputation, you can gain one appeal or pick up the bonus tile. If you choose to gain the appeal point, leave the bonus tile until someone picks it. The game ends just like in the base game, when the appeal of your zoo meets your conservation points. The game ends and the player with the most points wins the game. You also win exactly the same way. Now, my tips to win at Arc Nova Marine Worlds. Um, watch the tips I gave on the first video I made of Arc Nova. They all apply here as well. If you have an opportunity to get a couple of active reef dwellers early in the game, take it. They can be very powerful as they activate every time you get a new one. At the beginning of the game, focusing on small animals can be very powerful as they are cheap and can get your engine running fast. Remember that you can only have one of each special enclosure like petting zoos or each aquarium. And that's how you play Arc Nova's Marine Worlds expansion. As all great expansions, it adds cool new mechanisms, makes the game richer and more exciting without making it more complicated or changing what worked well with the base game. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. 
And if you enjoy my content, consider becoming a YouTube member, supporting me on Patreon or buying me a coffee. The links are in the video description. And if there's a game you would like me to teach, leave it in the comments. I'll definitely check it out. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.